Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today it is my absolute pleasure to say that I'm competing at the highest level in Clash Royale for the second time by participating in the official Clash Royale League, or CRL for short. So it has been quite a while since I did this. The last time I played in CRL was actually last year, July, when I qualified for the July monthly qualifiers and participated in them. I was actually in Bali attending a wedding, and I decided to play at the wedding, so I literally left the reception, uh, played my rounds out throughout the night, and it was a lot of fun. It was a pretty nerve-wracking experience for the first time competing in CRL, you know, a level as high as CRL, where I was facing some of the world's best players was obviously not easy, but it was also great fun, you know, I love this game and I find myself to be a pretty talented player when I try my best, so I wanted to see what I could do at a level like CRL, so it was great fun, but yeah, I did qualify for the monthly qualifiers again right about now uh, by finishing top 1000 on ladder last season, so I decided, you know what, why not, let me just try, unfortunately this comes at a very unfortunate and awkward time for me because it is literally final exam season at my university i'm going to be attending uh my final exams in the next few weeks and i have to be studying right now but i don't really have a choice like i just kind of have to play crl so it's 10 p.m starting and it's going to be running till probably like 3 a.m plus so i'm going to be in for a long night but i decided you know what since i recorded the last time i might as well do it again just bring you guys with me on my CRL journey and just document how well I can do. I'm mostly playing for fun. I don't have an analyst or a coach or anything like that where, you know, all the professional players have these kinds of resources. So I'm just going to be playing for fun, you know, building my own decks and seeing what I can do. So if you guys did not know, CRL is a duels format, which means that you have to build three different decks for a best of three and each of which cannot have any repeated cards. So you're going to have to play with 24 unique cards across a maximum of three games minimum two if you just win 2-0 and it's gonna be a pretty fun competition i think it's obviously a rewarding versatility because you can't exactly uh just play your one trick deck and succeed by being good at one deck you have to play a wide host of decks and a variety of different archetypes to compete in crl so i'm going to be doing that myself right now obviously i'm playing with through to cycle in the first game that's something i wanted to bring to your attention as well because no one really plays expo let alone 3.0 expo literally no one ever plays 3.0 in crl so i'm kind of like one of the first few people or at least the most consistent few people to be actually doing that um because again literally no one plays 3.0 let alone expo especially in crl where it's a very high level and a deck like expo is just not a very strong deck of course it is my one trick deck and so i'm going to be trying my best with it and i actually did just win i think or it's not over yet he still logs uh but i'm in my first round here and i'm playing 3.0 and it's going very well so far against a minor poison matchup so uh looking quite good so far honestly i have a nice damage lead in both lanes and yeah i'm actually uh you know taking a lot of pride in playing 3.0 at the top level and you know trying to represent the deck and all of you guys my community by playing it at this level of course it's not something i would recommend you guys do yourself because it's really just not that great of a deck and it also i'll get into the specifics later as well um it's just not great for the duels format but still i was able to win the first game so gonna be up 1-0 in my first set that's going to be a great start to my CRL journey, winning the first one with Through Connects with Cycle. Had to build a bunch of other decks, guys, to uh, try and compete with the duels format. My next one's going to be Hog Rider Earthquake. I unfortunately only have one Evo, though. I don't have Evo Valk on this account, so I have to play a single Evo Hog EQ deck. I hope it goes okay, but I'm kind of nervous, I guess. I don't know what the next step is. I just won the game, but I don't have any prompts or anything. I'm not sure what's happening. Alright guys, a so little update, I did lose the game, but the opponent repeated two cards, he played Poison and Log twice, and as I said, duels format, you cannot repeat any cards, so I talked to the admins, they said it's an instant forfeit for him, so I'm going to get a free win, and I'm going to win my first set 2-0, because my opponent repeated cards, very nice stuff, honestly my Hoggy Q deck did not do well, but my opponent made the mistake of repeating cards, so I'll definitely take that, going to be a first set win. Okay guys, I decided that I need some variety in my life, and I just cannot compete with the sheer lack of evos I have on this account. Like, I'm missing at least four. So I decided to play one game of 1v1 Showdown. I had five evo shards. I decided to play one game to get 6,000 season tokens, get the sixth one, and unlock the evo zap. Because it's going to be a very strong evo, one of the best in the game. And I think it can really uh, perform well in the current meta. So I want to have that versatility and option to play with Evo's app. So I'm going to be unlocking it right now. And I think it's going to be really great at just providing more versatility and options in my decks. Because that Hoggy Q deck was not it. Like, lacking that many Evo's is just not optimal. So I'm going to be playing with this, including this giant graveyard, really toxic deck. But let's see what we can do. 
All right, guys, unfortunately, the next set was against Gank Aslan, a very good player. He has very high finishes, and he kind of destroyed me. The first game, he went Lava first play, and I kind of got destroyed, didn't have the best starting hand with my giant graveyard deck. The second game, he just sniped the living hell out of me by going Hoggy Key with a Monk. Like, there was literally nothing I could do. I kept it pretty close, so I got him down to, like, 200 HP, but it was unfortunately just not meant to be. Uh, he's a very good player, so he has, you know, a number one global tourney finish, number six ladder finish, so no shame in losing. Again, CRL is at the very top level, so he'll be facing pros like this, and... I am not really ashamed to lose, but just gonna have to keep my head up and keep moving forward. Alright guys, my next set was against Sandbox, and I don't feel good about talking about two losses in a row, but you can kind of guess how this is gonna go. Sandbox is a CRL world finalist from the last few years, and he sniped me, like, beyond the grave. Like, the first game, he had Pekka Bridge Bam with Mother Witch into my giant graveyard. Second game, again, Hug He with Monk, so kind of a humbling experience losing two in a row against two really high-level pros, but I also did learn a lesson that I need to be more versatile and kind of switch my decks up, because if I stay predictable and keep playing the same decks over and over again, I will be in for a lot of trouble so i kept that in mind all right guys i'm into my next dual set just got humbled by two really high level pros but i decided to you know kind of uh, take stuff into account and actually switch things up adapt on the fly the only constant in life is change uh as a great man once said so i'm gonna be playing with pekka right now i've actually you know built a new dual set i just kind of did some research on what other people are playing and also uh like what the best decks are and so i've thrown together some new dual sets uh, some backup sets and i just have like you know a bunch of dual lists set up so hopefully i'll be able to do okay with this new set of decks that i have so the first one is going to be pekka bridge bam the reason i'm going for this is because pekka bridge bam is really overpowered right now like never thought i'd really be saying that but it genuinely is is like Pekka Bridge Bam has the buff Pekka in there and we also do have the Evo Ram which is super OP and the Evo Zap which is also actually really overpowered quite frankly so I think it's going to be doing okay this match this guy has Barbs, Bomber, Skeleton Dragons I'm not entirely sure what this deck is to be honest with you um oh Lava Loon I guess um gonna Skelly Drags on defense here he should not have enough for the Fireball so I think I'll take like one Loon hit but there should be a huge counter push hopefully only one Loon hit okay thank god and I think I can, you know, just really utilize this low reload Duchess. And I think I'll pressure a bit more uh, with my Ghost at the Bridge. Yeah, because that Duchess is literally at zero reload right now. So let's see how he responds to the Ghost. He's going to let it go. Okay, go Skelly Drags. Let me zap those real quick. Number one, cycling to my Evo Zap even sooner. And number two, getting even more hits. So pretty decent start. My Duchess is fully loaded to shield. Destroy the Skelly Drags. No hits. Honestly, guys, Dagger Duchess is so busted. I can't believe uh, they let it go in this state. Like, I thought it was going to be strong before it came out. Like, that was just my opinion because it has consistently higher damage than a Princess Tower. Um, but also, it literally does have more HP as well. Like... Un unless you go like 20 seconds in one interaction uh in one go then it does less damage than a princess tower but otherwise it does more with that huge burst of damage so it's kind of frustrating and worrying actually gonna go with my ram ghost at the bridge because i want to pressure bandit opposite lane as well just to pressure even more get back to some defensive options for this lava bandit's gonna do a pretty good job in the right it actually does quite well against the duchess because uh she does, you know, ignore one or two daggers. And I'm going to go with my Skelly Drags just to help out. We're kind of losing right now, but we do have the benefit of going with dual lane pressure. I'm going to go with my Evo Ram right now. I think he's in trouble. I'm going to Evo Zap as well. We have the double Evos on deck. So Evo Zap putting in works. going to kill those Skeleton Dragons, as you can see. He does a pretty good job of defending with that Evo Bomber. But I think, you know, the damage is done. Like, we kind of messed his cycle up. And that was pretty solid. Gonna go for my ghost to kill this bomber before it does anything too terrible. Mother Witch gonna spawn a bunch of pigs. I think I'm gonna have to play my P.E.K.K.A. now. I've actually been trying to play as patient as I can, guys. But, I, th I mean, we are playing P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Bam. Ooh, ghost gonna connect to tower. Um, I'll Skelly Drags first, because I wanna, you know, take this eye drag out. And I'll zap as well to make sure it dies. He missed the... One scale of drag. Oh my god, he got too greedy there. Gonna P.E.K.K.A. right now, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna just kind of play this deck like it's meant to be played in some matchups as well now. Where I'm just gonna beat him down by building up massive P.E.K.K.A. pushes from the back. That's kind of how this deck goes. And we are up a lot of elixir right now. Oh, that is a desperation loon if I've ever seen one. Gonna arrows everything off. Gonna zap as well if I need to. I definitely need to. Uh, take no loon hits there. And yeah, how's he gonna stop this, actually? Ram's about to charge to the tower. Okay, it does not. But, I mean, that, like, forced so much out on defense for him. And he still has to contend with my counter push, so... I don't see how this is going that great for him. I'm gonna ghost to make sure that uh, Bomber dies. Mother Witch for the Skelly Drags, and then Ram the Bridge as well. I think we got him, guys. Yeah, he's gonna Fireball, but Ghost is on Tower. That's GG. Let's go. We took set one. I can't believe it, guys. We got a great win with Pekka Bridge Bam. And, uh, yeah, as I said, I'm just trying to switch up my deck. So I have a bunch of different ones 
in the back i have this graveyard deck i can play um i have another one as well i have pigs eq like pretty good duel list that i put together here i kind of got some inspiration i think for the next set I want to play with Pig's EQ because he just went with his Lava Hound. He has not much air at all. He's definitely going to go with the ground deck, so I can kind of utilize this to my advantage. He's going to go with the Bomb Tower over the Inferno Tower, I think, as well. Just because I feel like it's going to be very solid um, against any ground deck he plays. And I do have the LP in the Graveyard deck and the Queen in the Pig's deck, so I have quite a lot of options, I would say. So... Oh my god, wait, I just noticed, guys. This guy has a number 7 ladder finisher. Are you serious? Wait, I just realized I'm against a number 7 in the world ladder finisher. That is literally what CRL is for you guys. Like, you face the best players in the world, as I said. I didn't even notice that in the first game. Wow. So, uh, that's wild. But yeah, we're playing Pigs EQ. Just gonna Pigs the Bridge. It's a pretty safe play. I, I would actually say I'm pretty solid with this deck. And we get recruits. I'm actually pretty happy about that, honestly. As an Expo player, I normally don't like going against recruits, but uh, since we are in duels format in CRL, you know, versatility to the max, you have to play a bunch of different decks, I actually think this is pretty good for me because I do have the Bomb Tower, the Delivery, like, I have quite a lot of options, actually. Um, I'll take, like, one Recruit Stab in the right, that's fine. He goes for the RG, okay, he's playing RG Recruits, this actually is pretty good for me, I want to say. Um, I don't have the best, like, DPS, necessarily, but I have really good defensive components in my deck overall. You know, I have the Bomb Tower. Again, I'm really glad I took that over the Inferno Tower here, because I thought I didn't really need the Eye Tower. You know, he was definitely going for, like, a ground deck. If he had Lava Cell open, I might have played, like, uh, some kind of Inferno Tower option, but, yeah, I think it was the best option here to go with the Bomb Tower. Definitely paying off, like, good pick by me, because now... Uh, I have Bomb Tower into his RG and his Recruit. It's gonna Pigs the Bridge. He's not back to Recruits yet. Yep, I was counting a cycle. And he goes for the Fireball, so... Okay, this is not the greatest, I guess, because, I mean, Fireball obviously does well against Recruits. Or against Pigs, rather. But nonetheless, he, that does mean he can't really kill my Archer Queen. He already uses Arrows in the other match with the Lava Hound uh, deck, I'm pretty sure. If not mistaken, anyways, so... Uh, he does not have Fireball Arrows, which means he can't kill my Archer Queen, actually. You can go Fireball Arrows or Lightning to kill that, but he doesn't have either, so... Yeah, we're, we're chilling right now. I might try and get a lineup with this Evo Bomber, guys, on the RG. It might be a bit aggressive, but I'm kind of feeling it. Let's see if I can... Yeah, I I'm feeling it, honestly. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna get at least one Double Bounce, probably, because Bomber's so busted. Yeah, that's one Double Bounce. That's another Single Bounce, so we get about, like, 700 damage for that. We're going to have a huge push to contend with now. Evo, RG, Evo Recruits. So I'll just go for my Delivery. Bomber in the left. And that's pretty much no hits. That was a really clean defense. Again, I did a great job picking this deck, guys, for the next uh, one. I think if I had the Graveyard one, it would have been a bit trickier, honestly. Might still have been okay, but definitely not as easy as this one is going right now. Like, Delivery gets so much value. Queen gets so much value. Um, bomb Tower gets so much value. Like, there's really nothing I can complain about right now. Going to go Anti-Fireball Bomb Tower for the right side tower as he goes RG the back and I'm kind of tempted to bomber again should I guys I am going to you know what I'm gonna EQ as well to hold that in place that's gonna be ooh, one hit maybe two yeah we get two bomber hits on tower honestly bomber is a mini win condition and it's such a ridiculous card I actually can't believe it hasn't been nerfed so yeah definitely want to utilize the evo bomber in the dual sets and uh yeah as I was talking about before you know this was a great deck pick by me knowing that he has no uh air decks really available using lava hound and balloon and uh, inferno dragon all of that so uh i kind of decided that the bomb tower was a better pick than the inferno tower and that's actually how duels like kind of situations go like it's really just about building the right decks and picking the right decks as well you're not always just winning with skill like obviously you can outplay your opponent but some matchups are just not outplayable in as well like you just can't so i'm gonna go for my second bomb tower i don't want to take any rg hits right now uh, Phoenix is a bit problematic. I don't think I have to commit, though. Yeah, I don't. He's probably going to build up for another RG in a second, because I have no bomb tower. And my Duchess is low. Yeah, good play by him. Going to rapid cycle back to a bomb tower. Let me scale these. I'm back to my bomb tower. Let me push that RG off the tower. Okay, I messed that up. Let me just log to make sure it stays off. Please get off my tower. Thank you very much. So, okay, I mean, we took some damage. Good punish by him, but my defense was still adequate and yeah back to that point i was talking about guys like it is about skill and you have to outplay opponents but at the same time deck picking can be a huge deal as well like you really just uh pick the right deck that can go a long way uh where even if you have a much better player than you that you're up against like this guy's probably better than me if i had to guess considering he has a number seven ladder finish i mean i have a lot of achievements in this game but i don't have a level uh, a number seven ladder let alone a top 50 minus one of seven so uh, it really does come down to picking the right decks as well. 
where even if your opponent is much better than you, if you outplay them strategically and pick a good deck based on like what cards they have available, stuff like that, then you can really just uh, get a good matchup and you can win like that. So yeah, a big part of duels is about the strategy and deck picking as well. That's why all these top players do go with uh, coaches and str strategy, the strategists is what I was trying to say, I guess, like people who just basically help them out uh, with the whole deck picking strategy and process. Uh, where you just have to get good matchups, basically. So that's going to be a nice win, guys. We're going to get a 2-0 victory. Wonderful feeling without playing Expo, because I do have to be a bit more versatile again. So GG's right there. I'm definitely going to take that. Um, against a number 7 ladder finisher. We just played really well with P.E.K.K.A. and with Pigs EQ as the second one. I think Graveyard would have been worse in that matchup, so definitely happy with the Pigs uh, pick on my end. And yeah, we're going to take that win for sure. He did have... A really good profile again number seven ladder is no joke let's take a look at that yeah he's like top 10 in the world right now as well number seven yeah that's insane so really proud of that win honestly i'm definitely going to take that let's move on to the next set all right guys i'm into my next set against the wolfie let's see what we can do right now i actually do recognize this guy um as you can see he has some pretty good achievements based on his profile um and i'm pretty sure he's a balloon player so i'm hoping he's not going balloon first uh game right here gonna fireball the flying machine and okay flying machine could be a bunch of things maybe recruits maybe lava hound firecracker okay not sure actually don't know anymore what this is gonna be i'm just gonna log the firecracker i guess and i'm playing 3.0 again guys i uh do want to give expo some representation i don't think i can activate king off that e-spirit unless i do a skelly's plus ice spirit play but that would be a bit like too much to do i think i can just activate off of a uh, Firecracker at some point, probably. He's playing Prince's Tower, which is pretty nice for me. Um, Duchess is honestly really busted. I, I want to talk about that, actually, guys. Like, basically everyone I've gone against has run Duchess in every single deck. I've seen, like, maybe one or two Cannoneers, and for the most part, it's just been Dagger Duchess. Because she's so busted, like, it's ridiculous. Gonna fireball the Flying Machine, maybe get a mini Expo lock right now. And we do not... Okay, I thought we did for a second, but he's like... Oh, no, that's so bad, guys. Wait, what? He has a Golden Knight in this deck. Okay, that's terrible, because that's, like, a straight 100-0 against Expo. Uh, um, I don't feel good about this right now. Through Pinot Expo against Recruits Golden Knight. Like, okay, this is not what I signed up for at the same time. It is what I signed up for by playing Expo, I guess. I'm going to try and activate King off this Firecracker. Let's see if we can get it. And we do. Beautiful. So, Duchess does kill a Firecracker, like, really quickly. But if you're even quicker with your own activation, you can still activate, as you saw right there. I was able to get the activation off, so... Pretty useful skill to have, obviously. Gonna split my evil archers the back, and I might just expo. Oh, he goes recruits. Let me expo. He has to go with a cage in front, I think. So, uh, or Esprit works as well. Actually, that's annoying, man. Uh, I'm gonna log, and he goes for the fireball. I'll knight as well. Let me protect this a little bit, and I'll, I'll try and cut the other recruits out of expo range in the left. Maybe I can get a mini lock by doing that. Beautiful. Look at that, guys. Amazing play. He was not ready for that. So that's how you get a lock in these kinds of matchups. Um, just using any kind of trick that you can. And that's going to give me a pretty nice damage lead, actually. I am pretty confident because, again, this is uh, CRL. You're going to be against a wide variety of players. This guy is a good player. He has better uh, finishes than me, I think. But, well, I think I have a better GT. I'm not sure. I didn't, I'm, not, I'm not here to compare anyways. I'm saying that he's a really good player, but he is a Balloon Cycle main. Again, I do recognize that uh, out of him. I think I played him in a GT before at, like, 25 wins, and he was playing Balloon Cycle, and he beat me. So, like, I know he's pretty good. Um... So, yeah, I think I can still utilize my knowledge with Expo, though, to do well, because he does not play Recruits as a main deck. I play Expo as a main deck, so I know all the tricks of this matchup, you know? So, I'm gonna go for the Expo right now, and he gets the Golden Knight down late. Oh my god, that is game. I can't believe it, guys. We kind of just destroyed Recruits in CRL with 3.0. That is such a good feeling, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, he got no damage on either of my towers. Even he gives a good game. He knows I played really well. So proud of that one. Hope you guys are proud as well. Taking down Recruits in CRL. We're definitely gonna take that. Awesome stuff. I was not expecting Recruits out of him at all, to be honest with you. But it worked out very well, so what can I say? Alright guys, so for the second game, I decided to play Electro Giant. Uh, I only have one Evo, because again, my Evos are kind of scuffed. Like, I don't exactly have the best uh, situation going on in my account. I need to fix that. Like, I don't know. I don't want to spend too much money at the same time, though. I don't know what to do. Uh, but I played E-Giant because, again, he's a Loon player. I was like 90% sure he's going to play Balloon, so I tried to sort of snipe him, but it wasn't the best snipe, I guess, because I only have Phoenix as air. Like, I have a Cage as well, but... He's like a Loon 1 trick, you know, this is the deck he plays on ladder, so he knew exactly what he was doing, and uh, E-Giant is a pretty good pick, but I'm not an E-Giant player, and like, he is pretty solid himself, so he actually did end up getting a pretty nice sequence, surviving my 
E Giant Onslaught in single. And uh, I was doing okay, but then obviously he does one trick this deck, and he kind of got me with a sequence right about here. So I went with my Cage, cycled my E Giant, and then he goes Evo Knight Loon. And so this is problematic for me. I could Lightning. Actually, I think the best play in hindsight was a Lightning. But I went with like a late Phoenix Nato on the Loon. And I ended up getting screwed over by my Phoenix, got, who retargeted away from the balloon. So his trick there uh, with the Evo Knight Loon push got the entire tower down pretty much. Like, that was so much damage, I cannot recover from that. Like, wow. And he defended well as well. Like, he has pretty good defense for E Giants, honestly. So it was kind of my bad. I messed up. But yeah, he got me in the second game. It was 1 1 after this. So everything was tense, everything was on the line for match three. Alright guys, I just lost, and I'm going to be playing Giant Graveyard for the final one. I can't believe I'm relying on Giant Graveyard to clinch me the win, but I am, so here we go. Uh, Giant Graveyard, let's try and see what we can do. I think this is the first one I'm recording in the video of me actually playing Giant Graveyard, so you guys get to see that. I do not want to show the ones where I got absolutely clapped by Sandbox and uh, Gank Aslan with P.E.K.K.A. Mother Witch into uh, Giant Graveyard. So, yeah, we'll see what he has. He has a Ghost right now. He has Cannoneer, which is a huge uh, thing for me. It's a really good sign. Mighty Miner. Okay, don't really like to see that, honestly. Mighty Miner is a great giant counter, so that's not wonderful. But again, Cannoneer is a great pick. This giant graveyard deck is pretty much a clear anti-meta option because Cannoneer is so busted. I think Dutch is going to change that now, so everything might be different. But for the most part, it was the case where everyone was running Cannoneer. And so basically, giant graveyard was so busted because... Uh, you know, we have Night Witch, we have Bats, we have Swarm with the Graveyard. Like, we just overwhelm Cannoneer users, essentially. That's what it comes down to. So, I'm going to Giant in front of this LP. That Tesla's dead, so he's going to have to be forced to respond. Furthermore, he's not back to his Mighty Miner. See, I had to cycle quite a lot there. Not going to go for my arrows. I think I could, but it's going to be a bit of an overcommit. So, I'm just going to let it go. These Bats might still force a response. Yeah, we do force the Ice Spirit out, so... Feeling okay about this. Uh, we're against Goblin Drill. Don't know if it's the best matchup, honestly, because he has the Mighty Miner again. Probably has a Poison. If he does, that's going to be tough. But I'll see what I can do. I'll obviously still do my best. So, I don't know what to cycle right now. I guess Night Witch um, in the back and the left. And he goes for the Mighty. Yeah, see, this is the problem. I can't really do anything about that Mighty Miner. I definitely can't go Giant into it. And it's going to invalidate quite a lot of my stuff, honestly. So, it doesn't feel the best. That said, I do have Evo Bats coming up. Could maybe go for a huge Evo Bats push. Um, we'll see what we can do. I mean, the Night Witch is going to go to work, and we might get some... I'm going to go for the Giant to kite this Mighty and the Ghost. Then I can just go Evo Bats on the Drill, and uh, we'll get a bit of a dual lane pressure situation going right now. I think, okay, the Giant does a pretty good job of tanking for the bowler. going to Arrows plus Zap the Tesla. Evo Tesla's really busted, actually. It does a great job. Still going to Graveyard, though, because we have a good situation right now. Like, Evo Bats still going strong in the right. And he does have the Poison. Oh, that's my worst fear. Wow. So, yeah, Poison is a great counter to Graveyard, obviously. Although we still get, like, two hits, because Graveyard's so busted. Got my Giant down late. Typical Giant Graveyard moment. Um, my bad. But, uh, we are up Elixir right now. Yeah, he's not playing anything, so I'm up Elixir. He's gonna keep pressuring, I guess. Uh, LP for those Goblins. And I'll go for my Evo Zap, I guess, on the Tesla plus the Tower. Just get that chip in. And then go for the Graveyard as well. Like, if I can retarget the Cannoneer off of the Graveyard, that'll be pretty nice. Uh, we get one hit. We get two hits, I think, or three even. Wow, wait, we got quite a few graveyard hits. Oh my god, in spite of the poison. So guys, I thought this was a bad matchup for me, but I'm starting to reconsider because we are kind of destroying him right now. Like, he can't really break through. I'm defending pretty well. And, I mean, it's not really going that well for him. I think Cannoneer really hurt him. If he had a different tower, he would have been much better off. Look at those bats devouring. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to giant the back because I'm up so much elixir right now. Like, this is totally just my situation. Okay, good opposite lane pressure by him. Just gonna Night Witch, and then I think late arrows on the drill. Like, pretty easy defense. Yeah, really easy defense, actually. And now I have a huge push coming in. Mighty Miner's a problem. Um, I'm gonna zap it, but it's basically a dead giant. I'm still gonna Graveyard, by the way. Like, even naked Graveyards are a good play against Cannoneer Towers, because we basically force out the poison. We still get, like, a few hits as well at the same time. Like, yeah, we already got one hit. We get another one. Like, Graveyard's so busted. And Evo Bats are on tower. We got him, guys. I think we got him. Yeah, the Bats are going absolutely wild. Gonna Arrows, and I just have to get back to my Evo Zap, and that is GG. So, wonderful win. He gives a good game. That's going to be the set win. We just won another set, guys. Let's go and see. We're going to give him the good luck and the heal spirit love, because he was a good sport, honestly. Good set. Like, it was 2-1. It was pretty close. He outplayed me in the second one for sure, but first and third were definitely mine, so...
I went to the dark side, guys. I played Giant Graveyard, but it synergizes so well with 3.0, as you can see. Like, there are no repeated cards, so that's why it does so well in my dual set. But I'm so happy about that. Let's keep going. Alright guys, into my next duel set against another Japanese player. I try and like scout out what my opponents are playing, um, but I have no idea what this guy's playing. Eagle on first play, what the hell? Okay, in CRL. Um, <laughs> Alright, but yeah, this guy has like Japanese characters in his name, so I couldn't like royally PI him or anything. Uh, so I just have to kind of see what he plays. I'm just going to Tesla. I'm playing a new duel set, by the way, as I said. I put together quite a few different ones. Um, this is looking... What? What is going on? He's just Eagle and first playing me. I can't believe him. Gonna poison everything, log as well, kill the Night Witch, and uh, prevent the healer from getting much value at all. That was a really clean defense. Yeah, that was a perfect defense, actually, by me. Like, Mighty Ability plus the Poison did a great job. Now I'm gonna go Drill to Pressure, because he's down quite a bit of Elixir, I think, after he spent so much weight. Ram, what is this dude playing, man? I swear to God. I'm gonna Evo Bomber on those barbs. I think we'll get at least one, maybe. Oh, that was so late. My bad. Oh, we'll still get a Double Bounce, though. We get a double double bounce. Look at that. That is like 800 damage. More than that. That's a wonderful start to this game. Wow. Uh, but he's still playing Eagle. I'm like, I don't know. He's Eagle. I'm Healer. Healer completely negates a poison in some senses. So that's not wonderful. Um, I don't feel good right now. Like, he's just leaking. I kind of want to leak as well. Like, I guess I'll drill. Uh, if he's just going to leak, I'll just Goblin drill. There's no way he's down that much elixir that he's just leaking the whole time, right? Okay, he has a bowler. That's a terrible sign. Great ice spirit, though. Gonna get me more damage and get uh, the bowler chipped out. Gonna Tesla. So I'm playing this really OP deck, guys. One of the best decks in the entire game right now. Goblin Drill with Mighty Miner. Evo Tesla, Evo Bomber. Again, Evo Bomber so busted. Like, you kind of want to use it in every situation when you can. I think the E-Giant game, I had an Evo Bomber, but I kind of got destroyed by the Loon. And it got, like, zero value against the Loon anyways, but... Okay, switching lanes right now. I think I might just, like, Mighty Ability at the right time uh, to kind of chip out the E-Drag and also the Blobs. Yeah, I'll go for that right now. Get a little bit of an explosion on the E-Drag and Drill to Pressure. I do also have my Evo Tesla available, which is going to do great. Um, he does get the Bowler down, so he actually has a pretty annoying deck. Like, the dude is playing Eagle um, with Battle Ram Bowler. Like, okay, man. Uh, my Evo Bomber will put in quite a lot of work. I'll Tesla to protect it. Okay, I failed that pretty epically, but still. This is not looking good for me. Hold up, because now I'm down quite a lot of Elixir. And that Bowler is going to wreak havoc. I kind of have to, like, let it go, though. I'll go for the late Ice Spirit, I guess. Um, he's going for a dual lane push right now, so I'm going to get my dual lane defense ready with my Bomber in the right. Uh, Skellies and Ice Spirit log for these blobs. Perfect timing. Get my Evo Tesla ready to shut all this down. Look at that pulse. Very satisfying. Ice Spirit as well. And that's going to be a pretty good defense, honestly. He's like build he's just like building up a lot from the back. You know what? I'm going to do it to him, guys. I'm going to Evo Bomb the bridge. That should be at least one double bounce. Yeah, that's one double bounce and maybe another one. Yeah, that's two. So, wait. I just have to get back to a poison. I just realized because of that really broken bomber. So, I'll just do that right now. Poison. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I was really nervous about this match, but he kind of just got destroyed. So, <laughs> I mean, this deck has a lot of potential, and I think I played that matchup well nonetheless. So, definitely going to take that. Another great win. 1-0 um, in this new set. I do not know at all what that deck was. That was a disaster, honestly. I don't know what he was playing, but let's keep going. Alright guys, I'm playing this Graveyard deck. Again, I have a new dual set, and uh, this one has Drill, Graveyard, as well as a third deck that I put together, which is RG. Uh, Evo RG with, I believe... I forgot what the other Evo... Oh, uh, Evo Archers. Yeah, Evo Archers. So, uh, with the Skelly King Tombstone. So... Uh, pretty fun dual set, honestly. I think the RG deck also counters Giant Graveyard, because I have a Mother Witch in there, and Archer, so... Uh, we'll see what we have in this one, though. I'm just gonna knight the back. I'm playing with this, like, weird Graveyard version I saw someone using that, you know, does utilize quite a few unique cards. Like, no one's really gonna be running Guards much. Um, Arrow Zap is a nice combination. We have Fire Spirit for the Drills, potentially. So, like, pretty decent uh, deck list, I wanna say. We have Evo Knight and... Uh, We'll see what we can do with it, I guess. Just gonna get my LP charging up. I also have Evo Zap, because again, I'm really happy I got it, honestly. Very worthwhile playing that one uh, game of the 1v1 showdown just to unlock the Evo Zap, because it's been, like, paying dividends right now. Like, Giant Graveyard put in a lot of work, and Pekka put in quite a lot of work for me as well, honestly. So, yeah, pretty happy about it. I think I'm just gonna go Guards the back, and he has a Mother Witch. That's not a good sign at all, guys. When, you, when you're playing Graveyard, you do not want to see a Mother Witch, so... I'm going to go for the arrows on it too, honestly. Um, I guess one good sign is that he does have the cannoneer. Like, 
I guess people are playing different tower troops to try and snipe different situations. I think, honestly, it's either Dagger Duchess or Cannoneer. Like, no other option is really better. Um, like, pr just Princess Tower, I guess. But Princess Tower is really not better. I, did, I think I played Princess Tower myself in the first game because I forgot to switch it out in my 3 Pernox with Cycle deck. But now I've switched pretty much all my decks to be running Dagger Duchess because she's just unbelievably broken, man. Uh, I'm trying to scale the back. I'll just go for my Evo Knight. And I'm really scared to Graveyard, guys. Like, he's playing Pigs. Giant Skeleton Pigs is actually a pretty decent deck uh, overall. And I think it's not a terrible matchup for me. Oh, Bomber. Okay, let me just arrows that right off the board. He gets a double bounce for his efforts. Um, but yeah, I think, like, this is a pretty good deck by him. I think my deck should also contend pretty well. Because, I mean, I do have the Evo Knight. I have the Bomb Tower for his Pigs. All I really have to worry about is that really annoying Mother Witch, honestly. Uh, but it shouldn't be the worst if I just graveyard at the right time. And honestly, guys, I am thinking of just waiting until triple to graveyard. Like, I do play a lot of different decks. Like, CRL does require you to play at the highest level with many different deck archetypes. And honestly, I do think I am pretty capable of that. Like, not at a super high level, like pros. But I would say I'm, like, sort of a semi-pro, I guess. I mean, I don't really want to, like, talk about this too much because I'm not trying to, like, gloat or brag or anything. But I've played this game for a long time. I've played many different archetypes played against different archetypes, so I kind of know how it goes. So I think, like, in terms of how to play graveyard in a situation like this with this kind of matchup, I basically wait till triple to go for any kind of graveyard, um, unless I have an absolutely resounding reason to go in. But, like, right now, I don't really feel that need. Like, I think I just want to chill a lot, you know what I mean? So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Honestly, I think it's going to work pretty well. Evo Skelly's almost got me, but pretty good defense against them. I have Fire Spirit, Zap, and Arrow, so no real concern. I'm playing this so chill, like, I actually have barely taken any damage right now, and I'm basically just playing very defensively, because again, I think that's how I'm supposed to be playing right now. I'm gonna hold on to my Evo Zap in case I need it for defense in any situation. Actually, I'll just Zap on the LP plus maybe Mother Witch. Okay, we didn't hit the Mother Witch. We did hit, we did hit it with the third white wave, I guess. Um, I'm, like, stumbling over my words right now, kind of nervous as well. I don't want to choke this game. Um, okay, that di giant skeleton is looking pretty annoying. I'll go for my bomb tower. Okay, I hope I don't get a giant skelly on my tower. Let me evil knight as well. Okay, that was very well controlled, I guess. Gonna arrows plus zap on those pigs, I think. Um, arrows plus zap. Pretty good defense. Still gonna have to go guards, I think, because, yeah, that's quite a lot of pigs still alive, and the duchess on zero reload is very weak, so... He got a lot of damage there, but we are still in the lead. I think I'll get him with, like, one graveyard and triple, guys. Like, even now is not the time. It just turned triple. Still not the time. He just cycled a mother witch, so... Uh, it could be soon, I guess. Maybe, like, next time he randomly cycles a Mother Witch. Actually, I'll just go right now. He's not back to Mother Witch right away. And I do have the arrows plus zap to kill it when he goes for that. So, gonna zap that. Gonna arrows the Mother Witch plus everything. We get a few skeleton hits in there. So, that's what I was talking about. Like, that's how I play this matchup. I just play super passive. Defend. Okay, I'm gonna have to go for my Evo Zap in the left, I think. Yeah, pigs. Let me arrows Evo Zap, guys. Look at this. Oh my god, those pigs got destroyed. Look at that. That was amazing. Like, I don't think they even saw the light of day. Like, one Evo Zap wave plus the arrows, I think, killed them. I don't even know, but they just disappeared. Evaporated into thin air. So, gonna get my Fire Spirit to kite this over. Knight to protect my bomb tower. Arrows on all the pigs. Zap as well for good measures. And yeah, this guy kind of got destroyed. Like... That was a really nice game. Honestly, it, di it did look pretty close, but it was a lot less close than it looked. Because I just didn't really ever give him a chance to overwhelm me with Mother Witch Pigs. And then it doesn't become that bad of a match if I just play the matchup correctly. So again, I do know how to play all these different archetypes to some extent. I think I played that one very well. Just kind of controlling the game. Um, and not really giving him any opportunities to get a huge Mother Witch counter push. So just because of that, I was able to get a clean 2-0. Honestly, I'm pretty proud, guys. I've gotten like three 2-0s right now in my set so far. So I'm very happy about that. Um... Honestly, been doing pretty well in CRL, so I will take it, you know? I'm pretty happy. Alright guys, into my final duel set against Lay Visionaire. I am currently 4 and 5. 4 set wins, 5 set losses. So, I've had some pretty close ones, by the way. Like, I had um, one where I lost by like 100 HP in the final game. I had one where I played... Uh, Pig's EQ with Inferno Tower, and he played Mortar with Valk, Fireball, Evo, Bats. Like, if you guys remember my Pig's EQ deck, I don't have a Fire Spirit in there, so it was really tough, because I couldn't kill the Bats. The Valk Fireball also made it impossible for me to ever get damage, and it was just really tough. Like, I just got overwhelmed by the Bats later on in the match, so I had a close set, 1-1, um, but it was... Unfortunately, it ended, so I do have a negative overall set count right now, which I'm not too upset about um, Because honestly, like I still won four sets so far, which I'm very proud of 
Uh, that being said, this is the final set. It's not over yet. I'm going to try and win this one as well. Maybe break even at 5-5. Five, five. That's actually how I did in last year's CRL, guys. I went 5-5. Five and five. So, I'll see what I can do. Uh, we're just going to go knight the back right now. Let's see. So, we're against Drill. I think this is the exact same Drill deck that I used uh, in one of my previous sets against the Eagleum dude. Uh, where it's like Mighty Miner, Evo Tesla, Evo Bomber. Let me Tesla to snipe this Tesla right now. I'm playing through Pinot because, you know, I could have played a different, like, set list. And honestly, maybe I should have because I feel like people are going to snipe me for playing through Pinot. Um, I didn't get sniped. Well, actually, this isn't really like a snipe, but it's still not a good matchup. Like, this is a pretty bad matchup, actually, uh, because they have the Poison and the Mighty Miner as the tank and the Evo Bomber, plus super fast cycle. Like, if I had the seconds Expo, I would never lose, ever. So, I think it's pretty tough, but hopefully I can play well and outplay with Thrupano. You know, that's what I came here to do. I came to give Thrupano with cycle some representation on the CRL stage. So, we'll see what we can do in this first one. Uh, but yeah, I decided to just play Thrupano for my final set. Just because, you know what, it's the final set. I, I just want to play Thrupano, my favorite deck in the game, so why not? Um, I did also forget to say, by the way, I was going to talk about how uh, through Pinot does put you at some kind of disadvantage, and I forgot to finish talking about that, but it really does, because uh, Dual Set, again, is basically the format where uh, you don't repeat any cards, and through Pinot has so many important cards, like Evil Archers, I guess they don't really count, also unfortunately my King Tar activation just barely failed right there, um, yeah, Evil Archers don't really count, but like, uh, the Evo Tesla is kind of useful, like Hoggy Q, could use Evo Tesla. Uh, we also do have the Skeletons and Ice Spirit, which are huge because, like, you want those cycle cards. And also, Evo Skellies is off the board now because I use normal Skellies. Uh, also, most importantly, is Log. Like, Log is the best card in a cycle deck you could ask for. So, not having a Log for other decks is pretty problematic. And then also, even the Fireball, like, limits you a little bit. So, like, there are honestly quite a lot of downsides to playing through Pano and CRL. Like, this is what I talked uh, about against uh, or with some like top level coaches because they were talking about uh oh he gets two double bounces oh this looks really bad guys i'm gonna have to focus up on the game and stop talking about random stuff but i was talking to like some x or not even x like pro crl level coaches like mohammed lights coach uh julesy last year he helped me build a dual set for uh crl and i used it to quite a lot of success actually um but i was talking about it with him and he mentioned Oh, I'm going to go for the log. I think he's low. Yeah, we finally got a lock. Oh my god, we finally got a connection, guys. Uh, that took way too long, but I'm finally back in this game. Uh, but yeah. He mentioned that it's like the biggest weakness of Thrupano because you just don't have that activation. Or I I'm, I'm like stumbling over my words, guys. Also, how did I... Speaking of activation, how did I mess that up? Like, I don't even think I did anything wrong. I just got screwed over by that activation not working out. But he basically mentioned that you have too many cards uh, that are important that you need to use in other decks, so that's why no one really ever uses it anyway. Let alone the fact that you need to be a very high skill, like, player to use through Pano and succeed against hard counters. Like this one, for example. And on that note, let me focus up, let me try and get a lock right now, because I really need to get something going here. Uh, I'm gonna Expo in the middle. We do get a mini lock in the right, uh, but I'm not done yet pressuring. I need to keep pressuring. I'm gonna Fireball the Mighty to guarantee tower damage. I'm gonna Evo Tesla to stun the Mighty and also just protect against potential normal Tesla. Also gonna log his drill off, and he goes for his own Evo Tesla. Poison Cycle comes in, gonna keep the pressure up again, so Expo right. Gonna get back to his second Expo in the middle in a few cards here. Good predict on the drill as well. Let me just Tesla to predict an Evo Bomber, because I don't want to get any kind of shenanigans where I lose. Yep, perfect prediction. He's not going to be able to get the bounce, so that was a really good play by me. And I'm going to go Expo in the middle again, now that I have my pressure going up. And I think he's in trouble. going to Fireball Tower, guarantee tower damage. And I think we got him, guys. Yeah, we got him. Let's go. Wonderful win. Really not an easy matchup, I think, but I just played better overall, so very proud of that one. Going to be up 1-0 in the set against Lay Visionaire. Final set. Let's try and close it out. Alright guys, and unfortunately, look at these matchups, I got sniped to the Shadow Realm. He went with Lava Hound Mother Witch, like what? Like who plays that? But like honestly, well played, like he really got me, I can't lie. Then I played RG, and he played RG Mini P.E.K.K.A., like he, how did he even know? I never played RG. That was a deck that I made with my friend, uh, the RG EQ deck, and I kind of got destroyed because I did not know he would go RG Mini P.E.K.K.A., but still. Unfortunately guys, that's the end of my CRL run. I went 4 and 6, which is still not bad, you know, out of a thousand players who qualified. I finished 276 in the world, so honestly, I'm pretty proud of that one. I think I did a pretty good job. 
considering I haven't played CRL in a while. And I've been so busy with university recently, I haven't been grinding this game that much, let alone different archetypes that I had to play at a very high level. So my last CRL run was 5-5. Five and five. Unfortunately, could not repeat that. I went 4-6. and six, But still, I'm honestly happy with like a top 300 finish. And uh, also, just competing in CRL again was a fun experience. Like, I had a lot of fun. I'll probably be back next month, honestly. So let me know what you guys think of this type of video. You know, just documenting my run through CRL. And uh, also, just kind of bring you guys along the experience and journey with me so i really hope you guys did enjoy the video i was not able to qualify to the next stage which is top 32 but obviously i was never expecting to do that i just wanted to play and have fun which i think i definitely did so you know 276 in the world i will take it that's what it for the video thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed take care and i will see you in the next one